Hello, this is John Tech Lock, and today I'm going to show you how to install Macintosh on your Dell Inspiron laptop. Now the laptop that I'm using is a Dell Inspiron N5110 with the specs stated right over here. Now regardless of what laptop you have, as long as the hardware on your laptop is compatible with any type of uh, Macintosh installation, so whether it be Snow Leopard or Lion or Mountain Lion, as long as the hardware is compatible, you can definitely hack your computer and install Mac on it. And it's definitely possible. Um, there's a website called InsanelyMac.com um, where they give guides and have a forum where you can ask questions regarding in installing a Mac um, operating system on your computer uh, when, it's a, you know, when it's a PC. This specific laptop that I own is a Dell Inspiron N5110. It's got an i7 processor. Um, and of course it's got the correct amount of RAM, the correct type, um, an appropriate hard drive. And um, definitely uh, the biggest, uh, the two biggest um, hardware that need to be consistent. So of course the processor and your display adapter. So Intel, Intel HD graphics and your i7 processor, the most important in this entire list. Now of course if you look at this, uh, we have... Um, a member in Insanely Mac, Andro Dev, Andro Dev. Uh, what he did was uh, he figured out a way to install uh, Snow Leopard 10.6.8. Now that's that's very interesting and it's very important to note because um, it can only accept this type of installation. And if you keep on reading, um, it's going to tell you some of the things you will need, and it tells you which install DVD you would need. 10.6.3 is what you would need for your DVD to actually even begin the installation. If you have anything below or above that, it's not guaranteed to work. I've tried it with 10.6.4 and it was not working. 10.6.3 did work. Uh, so it's all a, a matter of uh, finding and just following the exact direction that he gives, um, things of that nature. Now, um, of course, this isn't going to be a perfect Mac. It's still going to be just as fast. It's still going to have um, the same speed. It can still install uh, programs. Um, it's still recognizable by Apple. But there are certain things that your PC would have used that it might not be able to use. So uh, my version of my my version of this laptop does not have Atheros Wi-Fi. It actually has Intel Centrino, which is not um, supported by Macintosh. Uh, so that's definitely not going to work. You're going to need to get a USB dongle and an external USB um, uh, network adapter in order to connect to the internet. And of course, the Bluetooth may or may not work. Card reader might not work. USB 3.0 might not work. Um, but these are all the things that are, have been um, proven to work. So, uh, so what are the things you would need? First thing is iBoot and MultiBeast. Now these are the two most important things that you're going to need in order to even install or even begin installing. Um, Mac on your laptop. Now, iBoot and MultiBeast. Now, think about these as like a totally different, um, like a it's like a, a boot operating system, an operating system from which you can boot any type of um, hardware or any type of operating system, and it uses the hardware that you have and it can recognize it. So, uh, if you see right here, it says that you'll need an Intel processor. This is not going to work on an AMD processor. Um, Avast. Now, Irish there are has been updated. there have been. Um, Mac installations that have been successful on AMD, uh, but the method that I'm showing you right now will require Intel. And of course you will need a legitimate Snow Leopard retail DVD. Um, I haven't tried downloading something from the Pirate Bay or any type of torrent client, uh, but it probably will not work. Now, um, of course, before you begin, you're going to need to start with some basic... Um, uh, elements on your computer. 4 gig of RAM, that's the max that you have to have. Um, you can't put anything more for the installation. Now afterwards, when it's successfully installed, you can go ahead and put 8 or 16 or whatever. But right now you would need to have 4 gigabytes. Um, if you have a PC lap, PC computer, uh, as in like a desktop, uh, only one graphics card has to be enabled and plugged in. Uh, only one hard drive. Um, any type of USB peripherals get rid of it, so if it's an external flat, uh, hard drive, uh, do not have it connected. Uh, so, you know, of course, all of these things. Now, in your BIOS, you have to put it in ACHI mode. Now, that's incredibly important. That has to be set. Uh, 
So all of these things you'd have to follow, and I'll put all this, uh, all these things in the description box so you can just go on to it. Now um, you're going to need to burn something called iBoot, and iBoot um, is a is a uh, pretty much is just a software that you boot off on your computer, and you'll be able to um, install Mac using that uh, piece of software. And you're going to have to sign in uh, into Tony Mac x86.com. So you got to create a an username and a password and you'd be able to uh, download iBoot and burn it onto a DVD. Um, some people have had problems using the full version of iBoot, uh, the newest one, so if that, if you have an issue with that, get the legacy version, and 100% uh, of the time that has worked for most of the people who've tried it. So you download iBoot, burn the image to a CD, using the slowest um, speed possible. Uh, put it in your computer. Now. I highly recommend that you use only one partition on your laptop. So uh, if you want to, take off the existing hard drive, put a new one in, or just completely format the existing hard drive. Uh, it doesn't matter what you have it in. Uh, it could be NTFS. Um, what I did was uh, automatically just put it in HFS because that's what Mac will recognize. Um, but it doesn't matter because when you put your Mac DVD in, um, you'd be able to format it. So uh, once you put iBoot in the CD, uh, you're going to get this screen right here. Now um, with this screen, this is great. This means that it's loaded properly. Um, then you're going to take out of take the CD out and pop in the Snow Leopard retail DVD. And uh, once you do that, you're going to press F5. Now that's incredibly important because that's going to refresh the entire by uh, entire operating system, and this will pop up. After that what you're going to have to do is go back to this installation guide and type in graphics enabler equals no minus v pretty much that's just going to say that uh, run in the default graphics without you know uh, the way that Snow Leopard would have natively done it this is just the old version uh, so you're going to have to click that and then just uh, just type that in all you have to do is type it in and hit enter and it's going to automatically boot using this um, using this command and so you're going to come to the installation of the Mac uh, uh, screen, and from there you know exactly what you'd have to do. Uh, just follow the on-screen directions. You're going to have to format the hard drive, um, and that's incredibly easy to do. So uh, let's see, format hard drive. Installation. Okay, so you're going to get this. This is going to pop up. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to click on the flat on the hard drive name. It's going to only be one. You're going to click on it, then you're going to go to partition. Uh, once you go to partition, what you're going to be able to do is um, format it into Mac OS Extended. Now, it's also really important for you to go into options, and uh, from options, you're going to have to have it on a certain um, element. It has to be on a GUID partition table. So when you go into partition, you hit option. One of the options is going to be format in a partition map scheme called GUID partition table. Now that's incredibly important uh, because otherwise it's just not going to work. So once you have that done you're going to be able to hit next. Format the entire hard drive of course and then you're going to uh, see that you'll be able to actually start installing. Now um, this is also incredibly important. We're going to have to run this in terminal. Now um, when you do this uh, it may or may not work at first. And the reason why is because iBoot hasn't even been um, readily accessible by uh, the hard drive, the format of the correct format of the hard drive. So you might have to format the hard drive first and then run this in terminal. And this is incredibly easy to do as well. Uh, you're just going to go to the top of the um, of the install screen, and then you're going to go ahead and hit Window. Uh, or let's see, I'm going to try to find a better one for you guys. Let's see. Right there. Alright, so what you're going to go is go to Utilities and then Terminal. And then you're going to just type this entire code in. Very easy to do. Then you're going to reboot by using iBoot. And um, that's incredibly simple as well. And all you got to do is just uh, let it install and then it's going to say Reboot. Uh, by that, what you do is... Um, go to the top and um, to the Apple logo and click log out or X out or sign out or whatever and then you'd be able to of course 
successfully restart with I using iBoot. Um, and then it's going to pop up and it's going to look exactly like your Mac OS X screen. If this video is going to show, this welcome video, and it's going to look exactly like this. Now this is only the, um, the beginning of having a perfectly installation having a perfect installation of Macintosh. Because now you're going to have to install the 10.6.8 combo, uh, which is going to require you to do a couple of things. Um, and all of this is over here. Incredibly easy to do. You just have to download a couple of things. Something called text files, K-E-X-T, and pretty much what that is is a, uh, is a hack for your Mac to realize and understand the hardware on your computer so they can uh, successfully convert it into something that Unix can understand. Uh, because, of course, it's been programmed and designed for Windows, not really entirely for Mac, until you put those text files in. And uh, from there, it's going to be really simple. So I'm going to just put this. It's going to be tedious for me to go through all of this because it's incredibly simple. Uh, all you have to do is um, open MultiBeast, which is just a an installation file, a software installation file. Um, from there, you're going to run it. And all of these things, uh, you're just going to follow... Uh, the user DSDT, uh, the system utilities, all this stuff, and you're going to be able to successfully uh, install the KEX files as well. I'm going to put both of these links up. Um, now, this this is going to require you to have some knowledge uh, of operating systems. It's going to require you to have extensive knowledge on how to uh, reboot and uh, boot images and going into your BIOS and editing KEX files because this is a very tedious job. It may or may not work the first time. It took me a couple of times to actually get it correct. Uh, the first couple of times I screwed up. I wasn't putting in the correct um, terminal uh, program code or, you know, I was missing a step. Every single step must be followed uh, correctly in order for this to even work. Um, now, this is just the Snow Leopard guide. We do also have a guide uh, that allows you to install using um, Lion, Mountain Lion. And some people have said that it's been easier. Um, I haven't even tried Mountain Lion. Um, but it's, it's and I've seen uh, and read that it works better than the Snow Leopard installation. Uh, but I've been pretty content using Snow Leopard. So um, that's that's the gist of it. Installing it, installing Mac is possible on your computer. Uh, it's just a matter of how much patience do you have and are you really willing to spend a lot of time and, uh, uh, you know, have the ability to successfully install Mac. Um, I'm going to put these blogs up um, and I'm going to have all of these things ready for you guys to uh, read so you can install it for yourself. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, just write it down in the comments. Um, I will make a tutorial video on how to actually do it uh, step by step uh, with videos um, from a camera. Currently my camera it's not working. So once I get one, I'd be able to uh, film and record my screen. Uh, and then, of course, so you'd be able to see it. Uh, since Windows is not going to be installed, I'm going to have to format my entire hard drive. Uh, so that's about it. <coughs> so just stay tuned for the next uh, installment of installing Mac OS X on your Dell laptop. Or any laptop that has the correct hardware. Um, and of course, it's going to Tony Mac 86 blog and find out if you have the hardware that's compatible with your uh, uh, Mac OS X installation. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, you guys have a great day.